Yo, what's up, legends? Welcome back to another video on the channel. I've got so much to talk about before we get into today's episode. I did a live set with Rave Culture, which is out now on their YouTube. I will stick the link in the description. I played a lot of new music, so if you want to know what I've been producing for the past, I would say, six to eight months, go and check that out. It hopefully will inspire you to make some, some new music and stuff. So it was so much fun. The, the setting was crazy. Loads of fire going on. It was, it was really warm. Uh, actually, I was wearing a hoodie and I was kind of sweating, but it was just an insane thing to do And I'm so glad that you guys get to see me perform because I know a lot of you have never seen me play And hopefully that is about to change in addition to this. I have some more exciting news for producers specifically I am releasing a new preset pack with Sound Factory. Sound Factory, I've been using their stuff for a long time as you probably know um, still using their future rave presets on the daily so it's really good to make a, a preset bank with them i wanted to make a one-stop shop for all rave sounds so whether you're a side trans producer big room producer hard style future rave whatever you can find sounds in this pack so stay tuned on instagram for that it's going to be a crazy one i can't wait to start showing you guys all the drops that i made and stuff with it let's get into glorious the breakdown didn't get to do this last time i took way too long talking about the drop but that's just how I get sometimes when I'm talking about something I'm passionate about. In the breakdown, one of the best breakdowns I've ever been a part of. Had a lot of help from uh, Skylights. As you know, he's a progressive house producer from what I explained last time. So the chords, the idea for the sounds, this was all his suggestions. You know, I didn't know really where to start in the breakdown. This second section is where I kind of show my sound, which is this. <laughs> So that's kind of my part but this part was more like a progressive it could be a progressive house song but then i switch it up with the trance because as you know with my music what rave room is to me is just all the different genres that i like under one roof of kind of big room if that makes sense futuristic big room so this is his part arrows out to the life we used to lead take it down weary ride in his story Loud we shout from the world beneath our feet. Arrows out to the ones we used to be. We are glorious, glorious. So we're going to look at transitions and all the different sounds and, and how we did that uh, kind of section in the break. First off, we need to look at how to combine this beautiful ass breakdown with this aggressive ass drop. All starts with tailing off one synth from the drop into the breakdown. I, I do this all the time, whether it's from a, a drop lead in the drop or a sound from the drop. I like to tail it off into the breakdown so that you have this sound going throughout. That's the way it sounds less like a mashup and more like one original track. So we took this effector sound. And what I did was I bounced out one long. One long shot, so it goes du, 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 and I'm going to take away this magic automation just for now. I like to draw it manually because I've got way more control over it. Uh, and I bounced it as a WAV file and as you can see I can do anything I want to it. What I did was I clicked, right click and created an automation clip for the pan. So as you can see this crazy automation does this. <laughs> Which just, it just makes it more fresh and it's just not the standard, duh, that's boring, man. You want to do these kind of things to keep people interested, especially in 2021 with the big room sound. It's harder to keep people interested. So we have this kind of pan thing. What I do is on this one, I'll click wave and I create a wave and it makes the pan go really fast and it sounds like it's swishing side to side. <laughs> But as you can see, all I have is that impact. We've got a, a big Bram sound. And that's literally all you need. That's a great way to transition from a hard drop into an emotional breakdown. Just with like a simple little tactic like that. I also increased the endless smile so that the thing wouldn't tail off and just disappear. I wanted it to kind of stay on smooth.
you can hear how it kind of tails off there very important you don't want it just to disappear transitionally that's a bad thing to do so we jump into the respace a respace i'm using a lot actually in most of my tracks the multi-pad So why it was started down here, but what I like to do is break up the cut off because I want to have a little bit of that mid grumble there. That is carrying all the low end in the breakdown. And if you played Nino's vocals with this, it would actually probably sound enough because you're hitting the nice highs with uh, Nino's vocals and you're hitting great lows with this kind of bass. But it also has a bit of that mid frequency, so it should sound full. Arrows out to the life we used to lead. Now, in terms of the processing, because I never just take a sound and leave it at that. I always like to boost it a little bit. If we go to... I'm not going to cut that out. You know what? I'm not going to cut that out. I did not touch the low end whatsoever. That is embarrassing. However, this is a crazy sound. When I was listening, I was thinking the low end's really tight. I must have boosted that. Boosted that. Turns out, no. All I did was put a stereo imager on. I didn't want to go fully in the model because you're going to lose all that top kind of mid layer. So I like to make it more tight so the sub is tighter, but I also want that kind of top layer to be heard. Could separate them, but I'm lazy, so why why bother? Um, in addition to that, I need to start introducing the chords. So I have quite a few things. Don't know where this sound is from, but it was automatically an, an ARP sound, so I just drew out the long chords um that uh skylight sent me and it sounds pretty nice it creates a little bit of movement da, 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 da. it's got a little bit of rhythm we have pads as well which i believe are my pads the ones i use often oh these are big saw chords and avenger if it's gonna load yeah flute pad So that was kind of the, the EDM influence, but we, especially Skylights, he loves using pianos in his tracks. I wasn't completely into this at first, but when we laid it out, I was like, yeah, this is sick. Now for the pianos, I used Avenger. I usually use uh, Nexus. However, the Avenger one was really, really nice. It kind of had that analogy sound. It wasn't completely synthetic like Nexus is. Out to the ones we used to be. Now that sounds like a progressive house song, which is exactly what we wanted. We was we were saying first drop needs to be Ollie sound, breakdown needs to be skylight sound, drop two needs to be Ollie and skylight sound combined, which is progressive house mixed with EDM and side trance and all that kind of stuff. So we kind of blended that really well in the track and, and got both of our sounds in there. So as you can see, that's pretty much the main idea. However, we are missing some drums. We have these uh, typical Kashmir moving cinematic drums. Again, just to give a bit of rhythm, you don't want everything just to be stagnant. Duh, duh, duh. You want to create some rhythm, dun, dun, dun. something to just move the track along. We've got these nice claps, which I filtered up. They start really spaced out because I've got the reverb making them feel really far in the back. And as the reverb gets less, the filter comes up and you can hear them more clearly. Another important element of this breakdown is the guitar. I don't know if Skylight's played this himself. He probably is going to tell me that he did. Uh, I don't know if he can actually play guitar. He's a really good producer, but whether he can play guitar, I don't know. I'm going to have to ask him this. However, this guitar, a real-life guitar recording, just made it sound so progressive, and I love this. This is how it came. This is how the uh, guitar was delivered. And this is what I added to it. So we're going to go through one by one, see what things do. The guitar stereo distorts it a bit. 
but it gave it that gritty EDM sound and I was just I was happy with it man I, I wasn't too worried about the the grit that it gave this is the GTR amp stereo I think this might be waves yeah um, just try to find a preset which I liked the, the sound of I wanted to make it sound a little bit more processed soft reverb guitar I wanted to make a little bit wider so I've got the stereo imager crazy EQ kids don't take too much attention on this uh, a little spike where I th felt like I needed it and it just sits well on top of the bass With our feet arrows out to the ones we used to be I decided to keep the guitar in the section with the trance pluck as well because again it's about taking parts from the previous section into the next section to allow it to sound like one complete thing rather than just randomly cutting one thing off and then bringing a completely other sound in right you want to keep that continuity through your tracks so what I did do is I filtered it out because I, I wanted that trance pluck when it was in its low cutoff state I wanted it to be really clear and, and heard so we start off with a low automation and gradually open up the cutoff I'm going to show you what actually happens with Inspire I love Spire for this because with some of these trance sounds you can really do a lot let me get on the right place there. super trancy and I also love the grittiness of it where when it really opens up the grittiness of that sound I, I love texture in in songs in tracks it really distinguishes a new producer and an experienced professional you know if you're using like textured sounds in your tracks because it just makes it sound more premium I would say so that's basically that synth what did I do on the process and let's jump into mixer track number 10 camel crusher oh what a surprise shocked Arts acoustic reverb, of course, a lot of that because it's a kind of trancy sound, and that's it. So I didn't go too heavy on this because it's a really beautiful sound to start with. Um, with the guitar, it just sounds really, really like I would say, if I wasn't such a man, I'd probably cry. And then when you get Nino's vocals in, like the emotion just goes to that next level. In this section in the song, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do, but the, the energy is just, it's, the energy's big, but it's also quite emotional as well. We are glorious, glorious. We have a story, a story We are notorious, all of us. We are the glory of Decided to change the melody slightly. As you can see here, there's a change at the end, and it's another great thing for transitions if you kind of try to resolve your melody.